Do you hear? He's here, you know, waiting for you to say hello. He doesn't care who you are. You could live in a palace or in a car. Anyone. Anywhere. He just wants to let you know he cares. He's offering to guide you on your way. Through the darkest nights. In the longest days. And just asks that you stop to pray. So you can hear. Sometimes he whispers gently in the silence while you are listening. With a soft, clear thought to draw you near. Spoken to your spirit, not your ears. So, do you hear? Other times he talks supreme through angels, visions, vivid dreams. When your thoughts are like a river's rage, but a babbling brook is what you crave. Do you listen to God's invitation to dance in the rain and let it wash away the pain? So can you turn off the outside and listen within? His spirit is alive in us. It's where we begin to start a conversation some quality time with him, then you will hear. You know, the majesticness or majesty of God's creation is just pretty overwhelming, isn't it? So I want to thank you all for being here today. I'm Pastor Deb, and um, you know, I always get a little uncomfortable when people are saying all these wonderful things because I'm just a person like everybody else, and I could point to all kinds of you out there, like everybody out there, and there's something wonderful about each one of you, so receive that. So if nobody told you today yet that you're wonderful, you're wonderful. <laughs> so today is Mother's Day. And Mother's Day is, you know, we're talking about, um, is a day that there can be really good memories of Mother's Days and, and hard relationships that people have with moms. And so there's all kinds of experiences that you have. But today, you know what we're going to do? We're going to focus on positive things. Because even in the midst of all kinds of negative, there's positive if we're looking for it. And, you know, I do have to start out with a joke because I, you know, would do that for my husband because there are dad jokes we always hear about, right? So there's mom jokes too. We'll see. So there was a Sunday school teacher and said um, to Johnny, Johnny, tell me about the prayers you say before you eat. And what did Johnny say? I don't have to pray. My mom's a good cook. <laughs> he knew the answer to that one, so he must have used it some years ago. <laughs> what did the digital clock say to its mother? Look, Mom, no hands. Mom joke, okay. And the last one, this is for all you computer whizzes out there. Why is a computer so smart? Because it has a motherboard. Yes. So clap, laugh, you did all that. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so Mother's Day, again, is one of those days that we celebrate every year, and all kinds of nations throughout the world celebrate Mother's Day. What was really awesome when I was doing a little research about it is that Mother's Day originated in the United States, and it was right after the Civil War. And the reason it started was to honor mom, um, a lady whose mom had passed away, and her name was Ann Jarvis. And so to honor mom, they, they um, had a day of celebration for Mother's Day. And so they invited people... Because it was right after the Civil War, they wanted there to be a time of unity. And isn't it cool that Mother's Day is when that time of unity, that those people all came together? And in that day and age, you know, it wasn't like they could get online and they could post events and all this kind of stuff for people to show up. It was a word of mouth kind of thing that people, were, why people gathered. And so they had over 400 people that gathered for that first Mother's Day service. 
And so again, now throughout the world, Mother's Day is celebrated, but it's not always celebrated on the second Sunday of May. In other countries, it's celebrated different times. As a matter of fact, the Hispanic church that we have on Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m., so if you're ever looking for a service to go to, that'd be a fun one. Um, they're celebrating Mother's Day next week. And so I thought, that's so fun. We just get to keep Mother's Day. There's like one every month of the year. So if you want to travel and hit them all, go for it. <laughs> so Mother's Day, again, it's an international. There's actually a Mother's Day International Association. Like, I don't know what they do, but they have one. <laughs> And, you know, for me, this is an interesting Mother's Day because it's the first Mother's Day. For those of you that don't know, I lost my mom um, earlier this year in January. She, she's with Jesus now, and so, so it's my first Mother's Day without her. What's really awesome is I was with her last Mother's Day. And so for those of you that still have a mom living, if you can't be with them today, get on the phone and call them. Because you don't know when you won't have another chance. It's important to tell people that we love them. It's important to continue to build those relationships. So um, I'm a mother, have four children. Like he said, gave birth to all of them. Wonderful experience. I won't share it all with you. but <laughs> So we have pictures. I think we have pictures of our family. Look at, there we all are. That was at Christmas time in Florida. And then we have four grandchildren. So we have four children, and we have four grandchildren, and one on the way. So that really is five. And do we have their pictures? Actually, um, Michaela and Andy's baby is in that picture. That was when they announced to the family that they were going to have a baby. And this got stretched out a little. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Emery, and she'll be three. And so we have Emery, and then her little brother, Ira. He just turned a year. And then we have Roman, and he's two years old. And we have Theo, who's uh, about seven months, something like that. So our quiver is full with five. That's what a quiver full is. So if anybody ever says, what's a quiver full? Now you know. Five. <laughs> But we'll keep taking more grandchildren. So just to let you all know, we're not going to stop there. <laughs> so again, it's really important that we honor those people. And I think there might be one of my mom. And oh, look at that. Was, that was the happy family there. <laughs> like, get me out of here. <laughs> we really do have happy moments. For any of you who thought we were the perfect family, this proves not. <laughs> so, and then, um, I'm not sure. There they are. So that's my mom with the dark, dark shirt on, and that's Pastor Matt's mom, Vinar. And so they loved each other so much. That's really awesome when mother-in-laws love each other, isn't it? <laughs> and... Um, yeah, so, hi, Mom, in heaven, too. <laughs> so I just want to honor people that have made a difference in your life, and knowing that there's people that have made such a difference. It doesn't have to be a birth mom. You know, there are people in my life that have spoken to my life, that have encouraged me, that didn't give birth to me, but they were people that had words of wisdom to share, and and, you know, I could have chosen to listen or not to listen. And, you know, some of us, it can be hard to build those connections with people because it takes time to do that. And so it's important that we're investing in each other and we're spending time with people and we're building those relationships. And if you don't have that kind of person in your life, you can purpose to be that kind of person to somebody else. You know, God knits hearts together with, with other people. And there's people you can just feel like, I just have a connection with them. There's, there's just a kindred. There's just something there. Well, you know what? Set up a coffee date. 
Set up a time to get together at a park. You know, do something together. Invite them to a small group that you might attend. Build a relationship. You know, when I think of the people, again, that have spoken into my life, it's not always been things that I've wanted to hear, but things that I needed to hear. And, you know, that's really a true friend. People that are really honest with us, even in, in light of our weaknesses and Sometimes the things that they speak to us, again, doesn't feel good, but it helps to strengthen us. It helps to build character in us. God is so amazing the way he speaks to us. Think about his uniqueness in our lives. You know, God is different to me than he is to you guys. You know, the, the needs that I have, the times that I spend with him, the times that he talks to me, are different than the times that you have with God. And that's what's so cool about him. You know, he can go into the deepest part of who we are and really know who we are and love us no matter what. And every day is a new day with Jesus, every single day. We all have garbage in our past that we wish was never there. But you know what? Today is a day that we can start fresh. Right now, right this second. All that old junk can be gone away. And focusing on Jesus, really giving our life to him, is what helps us to do that. When I talk about the different people that have spoken into my my life and the character that's been built over the years, you know, sometimes when I'd be going through things and I'd be talking to somebody, you know, or mostly my husband, you know, he'd say, well, Deb, you know, God is just building character in you. And I'm like, okay, I've got enough character. You know, we're, we're good in that department. <laughs> but obviously, we're not good in that department. <laughs> and so, you know, they say, yep, she's a character, all right. You know, that's not the kind of character I'm talking about. You know, it's knowing that God wants us to continue to grow and to be more like him. And the reason is so that people are drawn to us. But they're not drawn to us, the person, but they're drawn to the Jesus in us. Because Jesus is, like, amazing. (laughs) And what he's done in our lives, and we sang that song about being free and, and being set free, that's really something that God does in our lives. He sets us free from our past. We can't separate wisdom and truth. And you know, there's only one truth, and that's Jesus Christ. Different religions will tell you, different people will tell you there's truth in different religions, but not true. There's only one living God, and that's Jesus Christ. You know, all those other gods, and I've said this before, but all those other gods are dead. Like, they can't talk to you, and if they do, that's a little, you know. (laughs) The kind of talking that God does to us is every time you open your word, You know, every time you open your Bible, I always think when people say, you know, God really doesn't talk to me, then what my words to them are, just open your Bible. (laughs) And when you read the Bible, words that like jump out at you and like that really means something or I'm really getting something from that, that's God talking to you. Wisdom defined is the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. It's insight, it's good sense, and judgment. Wisdom is the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So to have wisdom is a really good thing. It's like, you know, you can have it together in some areas when you have wisdom. But the wisdom that you have really, really isn't anything unless... It's connected with God's heartbeat because otherwise it can just be opinion. And we know what they say about opinions, which I wouldn't say in church, you know. (laughs) But um, the truth is with opinions, everybody has one and everybody has a different one. And everybody can say this and say that. But when you open God's word, that's truth. And that's truth for everyone. The opposite of wisdom are, th- are words like stupidity, silliness, nonsense, immaturity, foolishness, childlike, 
like all those kinds of things. And so, you know, when I was reading those, I was thinking, I can remember hearing those words over years, way long ago in my life, you know. Stop that nonsense. You probably have heard that. (laughs) That meant that I wasn't being wise at the moment. God gives us wisdom when we ask him. And what's really awesome is if we look at James 1.5 in the voice translation, It says that he wants to lavishly give us wisdom. So verse 5 says, If you don't have all the wisdom needed for this journey, then all you have to do is ask God for it. And God will grant all that you need. He gives lavishly and never scolds you for asking. The key is that you request that your request be anchored by your single-minded commitment to God. Those who depend only on their own judgment are like those lost on the seas, carried away by any wave or picked up by any wind. You know, I love this scripture because when it's talking about the wisdom of God, it's saying he gives us lavishly. But you know, there's an action word here, and we have to ask. Wisdom is something we ask for. It doesn't just come. We ask for it, and we seek it. You know, something about Pastor Matt and I, you know, we've got a few years on us, and so there can be some wisdom there that just is a result of experience. But even though we have experience, and even though we've been through different things in life and had experiences with other people, when things happen in our life, like we can think, like going to Australia, for instance, (laughs) You know, that's a really long trip. And yet, years ago, God put in our hearts, someday we want to go to Australia. And I can't say he's done that to me with other countries like Iceland. You know, <laughs> never want to go to Iceland. So now I'll probably go to Iceland someday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's... <clears throat> so... <laughs> So anyway, you know, when I, I think about that, we've, we ask God, it's a great idea to go to Australia, but we prayed about that so that we had a peace about it because things could have happened while we were gone or, or things, we could have been needed here for different things or the timing couldn't have been, maybe wasn't right, things like that. So those are things we pray about. We talk to each other about, and we wait for peace before we move forward with some of those things. And wisdom, as James understands it when he wrote that book, it says, is the ability to live life well and to make good decisions. Wisdom begins with knowing and depending absolutely on God, who's never stingy when it comes to wisdom for those who seek it. Isn't that great, too? Like, he's not going to hold out on us. He wants to give us his wisdom. You know, I have to tell a little story about getting wisdom. So when our children were growing up, we disciplined them, and we were those parents that used a spoon, and and we spanked our children. And um, yet we spanked them. We used We used the, we called it the rod, and we used it once. So we weren't the parents that were like, you need to listen to me. You know, we weren't those parents. (laughs) But um, we felt like we were obeying God's word in using, using discipline. And so we would say to the children, and this was with Daniel, we were at a restaurant, and he was acting up, and we're like, Daniel, do you need wisdom? You know, and and just then one of the waitresses went to back to a silverware drawer and opened the drawer and like heard, you know, when silver silver clangs. And you know those wooden spoons are in that same drawer. <laughs> and so um he opens or she opens the drawer and Daniel was like, No, I don't want wisdom. I don't want wisdom. And so we thought Maybe we need to change our vernacular here a little. <laughs> but it was funny, you know. <laughs> and so, um, so Daniel would ask so that he didn't have wisdom. So if you ever meet Daniel and you wonder what happened to him, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
There are things that moms share. You know, moms, I always think, have like this, they say women's intuition, but I call it the Holy Spirit, you know, just a little extra nudge of the Holy Spirit. And um, there was this website that I found, and it was filled with these things called mamalies. (laughs) And mamalies are homilies, so little words of wisdom and advice from mothers. And so I'm going to read some of these, and you can, can... Just think, no, I've heard that from my mom. Common sense isn't that common. How many of us have heard that? I've heard that. (laughs) Our family is rich, and someday we might have money too. If you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. See, you all know these (laughs) mommies. Somebody said, my mom taught me that if I agree to do something for someone, that I should do it cheerfully. Doing it but complaining the whole time defeats the whole purpose. Something we did, too, when our children were younger is um, we were at this lady's, a a friend of ours, home, husband and wife, and, and one of the boys came into the room, and he was about, um, probably about, 17, 16, 17 years old, and she had asked him to get something from the kitchen. And he said, I'd be happy to. And I was like, what? And whenever she would ask him to do something, he would say, I'd be happy to. We're like, that's amazing. And she said that she felt like that was something the Lord gave her when she was raising her children because they would always complain about doing the little things that they, that the mom and dad asked. And so we're like, oh, this is awesome. So we did that with our children for a few years until they didn't say I'd be happy to with a happy to voice. You know, we're like, forget this. <laughs> but, you know, when they were younger, it really was sweet. And it really was thinking before they did things, are they happy to? Are they happy to serve? You know, serving is something that A lot of times, if there's a need, it's not like 50 people raise their hands to help. Serving is something, though, that can be taught, and it's something that can be caught. Another mommily, and I really like this one, it said, always wear bright colors on a rainy day. Isn't that good? I'm going to do that one. Though I have a lot of black in my wardrobe, so we're going to have to do something about that. Um, And this is another good one. Use your broom to sweep your own porch before you go sweeping other people's porches. Ooh. (laughs) So you probably have your own mommies that you can share, and I think that one of the benefits of living longer in life is that you just get those wisdom nuggets along the way. And yet age doesn't always make you wise. Again, it's partnering your life with what God's word says. And when we don't do that, when we just try to always live our life on our own and make our own decisions, sometimes we just make a heap of trouble, don't we? So that's why I think it's so important for you to open God's word. Sometimes um, we have to remember that listening to instruction really helps us in life. It doesn't matter if you're 15 or 25 or 70, we can still listen to instruction because we'll never know everything. You know, I think the more, more seasoned I get in life, the more I realized I don't know. And I don't have an answer for everything. And I don't need an answer for everything. But sometimes we have to take that step backwards and You know, just be like, okay, time to put a lid on it. We don't always have to respond to everything. Different nuggets of wisdom. We can learn through something called the School of Hard Knocks. Have many of you attended that school? You know? (laughs) It's one of those schools that you want to graduate from, like, really early. And um, I don't know that that happens for everyone. There's different nuggets of wisdom that it took me years to learn. And so I'm going to share a few of those things with you. First of all, 
I needed to learn that the thoughts that I have about myself should come through the mirror of God's word and not through the mirror that the enemy holds up. Because, you know, there's all kinds of negative thoughts that can come our way. There's, I'm not going to make it, or graduation's right around the corner. I have so much work to do. How am I going to get everything done? There's all kinds of negative things we can think about ourselves and say about ourselves. And, and then when you think, you know what? I just have to stop that. I have to look at myself through what God's word says about me. Look at what God says about the capabilities that are in my life. Because he's gifted me. He's gifted each one of you here in a unique way that's unique to you. And, and that's why you were created. You were created because he had purpose in mind for you. Another thing that I've learned is that I can work smarter and not harder. And um, something that I love to do is time management skills, like always refining my time management. You know, I always think of people like, you know, we just were at Hillsong, that's a worldwide church, and, and the leaders of this church are always busy. They're always going somewhere, doing something. And yet, when we were at that church, we felt like we were at this church. <laughs> They were so personable. Like, you know, they'd come out in the, in the audience and talk with people. And, and I think, how on earth do they get everything done that they have to get done? <laughs> and, you know, I just think it's, it's time management. I'm sure they have people that help them with their schedules and do their schedules for them. One of the things that's important to do is make lists. If you're not good at getting things done, make a list. I heard um, a few years back, because I would do this for my husband, you know, I'd give him like these day timers and, and these notepads and all these things like, you know, honey, if you make lists and then you can check that off and it'll be awesome. Well, then I read an article that said the worst gift that you can give a man is one a, a day timer, is a calendar, a scheduler. I'm like, well why? They need them, you know. At least that one needed one. But, <laughs> um, and, the, you know, the, the resolve and all that is what can make your life easier in the long run, long, yeah, long run, <laughs> what can make it easier? Another thing that I've learned, and it, it was something that I learned just this year, that my parents aren't going to be around forever. You know, when you have parents that are with you for 50 plus years of life, they're just always going to be there. You know, I think of how many people haven't had their parents in their life as long as I have. And I still have my dad. And, and you know, even with that, my mom was like, did everything at our house. Like she did all the bills. She did all the scheduling. She managed everything. And now she's with Jesus. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> mom did all this stuff. And so my dad is like clueless on how to do a lot of this stuff. And so, you know, my, myself and my sister and brothers have stepped in to help him with things. You know, and, and I just one day, you know, I'm like, okay, God, like, you know, mom is five years younger than dad. And we always thought that that she'd be around a lot longer. And, and because it's really put more work on me, honestly, is why I was asking God about this. So truth be told, <laughs> because I have to manage my schedule a lot better. So because I go and help him a day or two a week. And so, um, but I just really felt that still small voice say to me, because you had a relationship with your mom, that you didn't have with your dad. And so my dad and I have gotten super close. <laughs> and he talks to me about his feelings. Like, you know, my dad's like an, an old farmer guy who like, you know, giving him a cell phone is like giving him <laughs> an airplane. <laughs> you know, like he has no clue how to work this stuff, you know. And so, so when I think of all the little ways that we have to help him, it really has, has really built relationship. 
you know, and, and how he talks about her and how he talks about his feelings. I never heard my dad talk about any of that stuff. My dad was never the dad who said, I love you, ever. So if you have hang-ups about that, <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay that we don't hear those words because his actions, my dad's actions, speak love all the time. He couldn't wait for me to get back from this trip so I could do his work. No. <laughs> no, because he really missed me. As a matter of fact, he said, it's about time that I'm back. <laughs> so then my mom, you know, my mom was a wonderful, wonderful lady. And, and the things that she taught me is she was probably the most thoughtful person I've ever met in my life. She would give, like, know that I had friends that had a baby, and she'd give them baby gifts, you know. And she would give gifts to everybody and, and anyone for anything. So she was so thoughtful and so generous. Family was super important to my mom. And so, you know, I, I think about that, and I think about the importance of spending time with family, making time for family. And the other thing that I learned about her is how much she loved my dad. You know, they were married for 58 years, but they were together for 60 years. And so 60 years is a really long time to be with somebody. And we know that 60 years of being with somebody isn't always fun and games, hunky-dory. <laughs> you know that there were bumps in the road, but there was commitment. So the way she loved my dad, that was a lifelong commitment to, that, to their marriage, was hard work. And it was a lot of time, but she was committed to family. You know, when I think about my life, and I think if you were saying to me, Pastor Deb, what would be three nuggets of wisdom you could give me? I would say, read a proverb every single day. Because the book of Proverbs, there's 31 books, or the chapter, there's 31 books, 31 chapters, and so there's one for every day. And I think when we get a hold of the wisdom of God, of his understanding, of his knowledge, like we have truth in our hands. And the thing about um, the book of Proverbs is it covers topics like wisdom, understandment, understanding, the commandments or the laws of God. It talks about sin and the consequences of sin. It talks about what happens when we break God's laws. For instance, in Proverbs 2, 1 through 7, in the New Living Translation, it says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you'll understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He's a shield to those who walk with integrity. So that's just like one part of a chapter you know, you could feed on that. <laughs> like, you could read that over and over and over again and keep getting nuggets from that. But the whole book of Proverbs can give you that. Another thing I would tell you to do is to embrace the season of life that you're in. Don't try to rush it. Don't look at the past. But embrace where you are today. You know, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about, you know, God, God's word talks a lot about today and what happens today. There's a reason for that, <laughs> because I think a lot of times we're really good at looking to the future and what can happen and what could be, and we don't focus on today and what's going on in our life today. In Proverbs 8, 32 through 34, it says, And so my children listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful, Listen to my instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. 
You know, the other todays in the Bible is today is a day of salvation. Today, if you hear my voice. So he wants to talk to you today. And sometimes it's just about today. And so savor today. Savor the moments you're in. Don't always look ahead. We had um, a women's brunch here. And there was a lady here. She's a nun. She was 100.5 years old. And we said to her, we asked her, so what, what one nugget of wisdom could you give us? And she said, don't dwell so much on your past. You can't do anything to change it. Look at today and look at the future. Look at all that's ahead of you. Because when we look at the past, the stuff we can't change, it doesn't help us, does it? But we can have freedom when we look ahead. Another thing that I would say to you is to live generously. Don't think just about yourself. You know, again, with Pastor Matt and I, when we get gifts and from time to time that'll happen and, or we sell something, you get money. You know, we, we talk about that, like what should we do with this? What, what is ours to keep for ourselves and our needs and what is ours to give? And so live gener generously. Think about other people that need help. Think about the help that the church needs. You know, Mother's Day is so commercialized, and it's so interesting. Do you know that over $30 billion was spent last year on Mother's Day? On gifts, on cards, jewelry, spa days. <laughs> and that doesn't count the people that were taken out to dinner. And that was only in the United States. I was like, oh my goodness, imagine what $30 billion could do for the kingdom of God. Imagine what we could do with $30 billion in helping this world that we live in. Imagine that. And then I think of generosity. You know, I think of the chairs that you're sitting in. Those chairs were purchased in about the year 2000. Some of you maybe were just born in the year 2000. Some of the people who, who purchased those chairs or when this building was built stained the wood in the ceiling. Some of those people have gone home and are with Jesus. And you know, when you think about that, they weren't building for themselves. They were building for all of you. They were building for us. They were building for the kingdom. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so when you sow, when you give, it's not for yourself. It's for what's to come. And again, when I think about mothers, I think of how selfless they are. And um, I came across this. It talked about the invisible mother. So I'm going to read it to you. It says, it all began to make sense. The blank stares, the lack of response, the way one of the kids will walk in the room while I'm on the phone and ask to be taken to the store, inside I'm thinking, can't you see that I'm on the phone? Obviously not. No one can see if I'm on the phone or if I'm cooking or if I'm sweeping the floor or even if I'm standing on my head in the corner. Nobody can see. The invisible mom, that's who I am. Some days I'm only a pair of hands, nothing more. Can you fix this? Can you tie that? Can you open this? Some days, I'm not a pair of hands. Some days, I'm not even a human being. I'm a clock. What time is it? Do you know what time my favorite show is on TV? Do you know the phone number for blah, 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 blah? Sometimes, I'm not a person. I was certain that these were the hands that once held books and once studied history in English and once had good grades, and once thought about herself. But they disappeared into a jar of peanut butter and jelly. Never again to be seen. She's going, going, going. She's gone. But one night, a group of us, my friends and I, were having dinner. And we were celebrating a return from a friend of ours who had gone to England. And so this friend got back from this fabulous trip, and she was talking about the restaurants they'd gone to and the theaters they went to and 
the hotel she stayed in and all these wonderful things. And I was just sitting there looking around at others all put together and thinking, like, why am I even here? I can't compare to these people. And I was feeling sorry for myself, and I was really feeling pretty pathetic. When she turned to me, and with a beautifully wrapped package, she said, I bought this for you. And it was a book that was wrapped beautifully, but it was a book on the great cathedrals of Europe. I wasn't exactly sure why she'd given it to me, since, like, I didn't have anything in common with the cathedrals in Europe. But I understood when I read her inscription inside, she said, with admiration for the greatness of what you're building when no one sees. <laughs> so, you know, when I think of, of you, all of you that sow into people's lives, you're building greatness. In the days ahead, she said, I read, no, I devoured the book. I discovered all these things and how this book was for me. There were life-changing truths that I learned after which I could pattern my life work. Number one, no one can say who built those great cathedrals. They have no record of their names. Number two, these builders gave their whole lives for a work that they never would see finished. Number three, they made great sacrifices and expected no credit. Number four, the passion of their building was fueled by their faith and that the eyes of God saw everything. There was another story in the book that talked about this guy that was carving these wood birds and, and this... Um, one of the businessmen had come and was looking at the cathedral as it was being built and said, why are you taking so much time building and carving that bird when nobody's going to see it? It's going to sit inside a beam. And he said, the workman said to him, because I know that I'm doing it for God and God sees it. This lady closed the book and filling the missing pieces were all falling into place. It was almost as if she heard God whisper to me, I see you. I see the sacrifices you make. I see what you do every single day when no one else does. No act of kindness you've done, no sequin you've sewn on, no cupcake you've baked, no sporting event, no last minute errand is too small for me to notice and smile over you. You're building a great cathedral, but you can't see it right now. You don't know what it's going to become. I keep the right perspective when I see myself as a great builder, as one of the people who show up at the job that they'll never see finished, to work on something that will never have their name on it. The writer of the book went so far to say that no cathedrals could be, could be built in our era, in our generation, because they couldn't find enough people to make those sacrifices. That's kind of sad, isn't it? When I really think about it, she said, I don't want to tell the friend that my son is bringing home from college for a weekend about all the things I do around the home. That would mean that I built a monument unto myself. But what's really inspiring to me is when I hear my son say, you want to come to my house for the weekend, you're going to love it there. How awesome is that? <laughs> you know, ladies, women, men, you guys, we have cathedrals in front of us. We have people that we can speak into. We have resources all around us that be, can be used for building people up. You know, I looked at the... The longest cathedral it took to build in medieval times was the York Minster Cathedral, and it took 252 years to complete. Imagine the vision that had to be passed on from year to year to year, from generation to generation, 252 years. When I think about our children, and I think of 
how we're pouring into children. When you guys, you serve in kids' ministry, you're pouring into cathedrals. You're building cathedrals. You know, when you're giving people words of encouragement around you, you're building cathedrals. The voice of wisdom has all kinds of voices. Wisdom has the voice of protection. The voice of instruction is wisdom. Correction is wisdom. Love and joy, they're all wisdom. Happiness is wisdom. Wisdom's voice isn't always going to be the most popular voice because it's honest and because it's truth. Wise people want wisdom around them. They seek wisdom and they long for wisdom. You know what makes a parent really happy? It's when they have a child that loves the Lord. And as a matter of fact, in 3 John 1.4, it says, I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. So for all of you sitting in this room today, you're all making your mom so happy. <laughs> because, you know, I always feel like when that baton was passed from a child being a child to being an adult, the only person that could pass that baton is God, right? <laughs> because he knows their future. And so knowing that God uses us for a little bit in a child's life, but he loves them way more than we do. And so if you have a child who's away from God, you know, keep praying for them. Keep pressing in. If you're somebody who's taken a few steps back and think, you know what? I have to change this in my life. That's like really awesome because at any second, we can ask God if we can come back to him and he receives us. Just like a parent would never turn away their child, our God loves us way more than all that. So wisdom can only be found in a true and authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. I'd like you to close your eyes bow your heads if you're somebody here today and you've never really experienced Jesus in a way that you know that you receive your wisdom from him today's a day that all that can change if you've made mistakes if you've been like my life is pointless God will never receive me that's a lie you have to look in the mirror that God put in front of you and how he sees you and how he cherishes you and loves you. So if you're somebody who doesn't know that kind of love and hasn't experienced that, and you don't know if today, if you die today, if you would have eternity, spend eternity with Jesus, I want you to just think in your heart, is this something that's for you? And then I'd like you to raise your hand and say, I'm one of those people who need more of God's wisdom. I need salvation. I need to know that I'm forever going to be with Jesus. So raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. Only Jesus can change our hearts. So I'd like you to all say this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to the cross to die for me, to forgive me for my sins. And I ask now that you come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. From this day forward, I'll serve you with all my heart. And I thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit so that I'm led by you and your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.